You know, I always wondered what it'd be like to see Goku in a story with actual writers. <laughs> So, in this day and age, it's almost unsurprising that so many animation showrunners want to make their shows mean something. This is especially true with kids shows lately. The 2010s were chock full of new faces in the industry that were just trying to make the next Avatar. Next to none of them succeeded and left us with a whole decade of content that was just really not fun to come back to. Like, I can't go back to watch Star vs. or Voltron because of just how dull and unpleasant they ended up becoming, respectively. We certainly got some good stuff in the interim in the form of slice-of-life comedies, but it's almost always disregarded by fandom because there aren't enough high-stakes or villain redemptions. Then in comes LEGO with a fucking steel chair with the words, Hey, you remember fun? written on them with LEGO Monkey Kid. Now, I legit have not watched a LEGO-based story since... I think the first Bionicle movie. I haven't seen Ninjago, Lego Star Wars, or even any of the Lego movies. Not that I thought any of them were bad, it's just that at first glance none of them really clicked with me. I didn't really feel the need to make time to check them out. Then my friend Tifa started posting about this show called Monkey Kid, and after seeing a few clips of it, I was like, oh shit, this actually looks really good. So I sat down to watch it, and boy howdy am I glad I did. This show is up there with the Owl House on lists of shows that are just an absolute joy for me to watch. It's funny, it's action-packed, it's surprisingly heartfelt at times, and it is fucking gorgeous. It feels like an old Saturday morning cartoon cranked up to 11. Now at this point you might be thinking, Michaela, this intro is running a bit long and so far you're not telling us what this show even is, what the fuck? To which I would say, fair point. So in order to gain a better market in China, LEGO created the IP Monkey Kid, a spiritual successor of Journey to the West, one of the four great classical novels of Chinese literature. Because I'm certain that's what poet and novelist Wu Cheng En would have wanted. Okay, that's a bit harsh. To be fair, Journey to the West has seen a lot of modern mainstream adaptations over the years, the most notable but unmistakably detached of them being Dragon Ball. This show, however, is a very interesting case as it is very much a pseudo-sequel spin-off kind of deal. Of course, that doesn't mean that you absolutely absolutely need to have read Journey to the West to enjoy this show, because odds are, like me, you probably haven't, and all your knowledge of the series is secondhand from the OSP videos. But even then, no previous knowledge is required for viewership. Everything you need to know is explained quite thoroughly when it needs to be explained. The rest is just a neat little backdrop of trivia. The show itself follows the misadventures of protagonist MK and his group of friends as he trains under the mischievous monkey king Song Wukong himself, as he learns to become a hero in his own right and save the world from demons and the like. Not exactly a very complicated show to follow. As I've said, it's very much a standard Monster of the Week Saturday morning cartoon as you can get in recent years. Not unlike the very episodic novel series itself, or so I'm told. Yeah, what makes Monkey King as good as it is doesn't really come from the plot. There's nothing really that's going to shock you or get you thinking about the human condition. Now, what makes the show shine, apart from the fantastic animation, or the legitimately funny gags, I feel like this would be easier if I had fingers, <laughs> is the characters. You've got MK, a good-hearted but empty-headed shonen protagonist, his best friend Mei, the hyperactive and hyper-competent girl of the group, Pigsy, MK's boss-slash-father figure, Sandy, a brawler-made gentle giant, thanks to PTSD, SD, and that guy, yeah, him. It's made pretty clear that MK's crew was meant to emulate the original party in Journey to the West, either being descendants or possible reincarnations. Now, that isn't to say that these characters are direct copies of their counterparts as far as I'm aware. They have their own quirks and vices that make them stand out on their own, and each of them gets at least one good episode of character work. Mei, for example, worries about her bubbly nature, making her the odd one out of a family legacy she otherwise deeply respects. Pigsy is an older guy who just does his best to coach MK through general life lessons, while still being subject to his long-standing vices. Sandy has his own issues to deal with, and he does, he has a very good handle on them, he's healing. It's just that he has to learn that there are times to be gentle, and there are still times to just wreck shop. And of course, MK has the long-standing problem of feeling like he'll never amount to as much as his teacher, Sun Wukong. Though, to be fair, that's a valid concern to have because Sun Wukong is amazing in this show. Make no mistake, this is not just Goku's character being slapped onto some weird Lego homunculus, despite the fact that he's voiced by Sean Schemmel. No, this is the Monkey King. A little older, a little wiser, a little more responsible, but unmistakably him. He's tricksy, he's got a cheeky sense of humor, he's generally easygoing, but still quite impulsive. Hell, the only reason he's taken on a student in the first place is so he could just chill out in retirement for the rest of his days, which, 
given that he's immortal, would be all the days. It's made very clear that this story happens after his proper character development as he passes his wisdom down onto MK, who he actually has a very good student-mentor relationship with. It's not perfect, miscommunication being a definite hamper in MK's training, but it's clear that Wukong is putting effort into being a teacher. Every time we see these two training, Monkey King leaves MK with a lesson to ruminate on for the rest of the episode. Dare I say he's actually a better teacher than Ida. I'm sorry, Owl Lady. You're still a good burp, Mom. But Monkey King actually teaches things. He is still very much the same character from the books, but he's also a seasoned veteran with a legacy, albeit with a less than stellar track record stapled onto it, so it's not hard for MK to feel like he's just perpetually in Monkey King's shadow. Oh, speaking of shadows, Six-Eared Macaque is in this show, and he exists. I don't exactly dig him, but he's here from the books. I guess I should talk about the villains as well, as they are one of the single most enjoyable things about the entire damn show. Nowhere in sight are the likes of the Diamonds or Lilith. No, these are legit Saturday morning cartoon villains, and I am living for it. Fun, performance-driven characters you either love to see, or love to see get wrecked. You got the gold and silver horn demons, who love to sow mischief. You got Femme Fatale Spider Queen, voiced by none other than the immaculate Kimberly Brooks. One of the best VAs in the fucking business, I'll fucking fight you on it. Oh! Monkey King! Well, isn't this a nice surprise? Finally come out of hiding just to see me? You got the creepy and super powerful Lady Bone Demon ready to drop the hammer on everyone. And of course, you got Macaque, who is also there. But honestly, the cake takers of the villain roster is undoubtedly the Demon Bull family. It don't get more ham and cheese sandwich than these three. Demon Bull King is a heavy hitting powerhouse long since fallen from grace, and most of the time uses his considerable strength to just throw petulant tantrums. The true power behind his throne would be his wife, Princess Iron Fan the learned schemer of the two who was no less formidable on the battlefield. I know who Sketchy's favorite character is. What's great is that you'd think that this dynamic would get these two in some painfully heteronormative toxic nonsense, but no, these two actually love and respect each other. I mean, Iron Fan spends fucking who knows how long trying to get her husband out from underneath a mountain, Bull King actually listens when his wife advises him, and they each have a vested interest in the other's safety and well-being, even willing to ally with their enemies to help secure it. My absolute favorite exchange between these two is the bit right after Bull King is broken out of mind control. What? What happened? Mother! You came back to me. Oh, That is so fucking soft! I love this power couple! I don't even want them to repent or anything, I just want them to be happily married villains together. And then, of course, you have their kid Red Sun. And oh my god, I love this little shit. He is narm and sass for days, complete with a blimp-sized ego overcompensating for some heavily rooted daddy issues. This guy is hammy as fuck, and he absolutely shines when he bounces off the other heroes. You filthy peasants! If I tried to explain mystical interdimensional travel to a bunch of peasants, it'd melt your brains. All right then, I'll be off to grab that peach. Toodles! What? Well, that was easy. <gasps> Girlfriend, flaming fist of dignity! Oh. Hero of the city, saving dad, saving the world, saving spicy barbecue one bite at a time! Would you give me that? Oh god, I just realized Carousel would ship the fuck out of these two. Okay, I really need to get my friends to watch this show. This guy right here is what Hunter should have been. A self-important braggart who can't escape the fact that he's just a narmy weasel that impotently kisses up to his uncaring father. You can't take him seriously for a moment, and you're not supposed to. You don't want good things to happen to him, you just want to see how badly his toxic egoism can get him fucked over. And what's especially nice about all these villains being fun characters is that none of them are repentant. There's nary a redemption arc in sight for any of them. The Demon Bull family and Spider Queen have fought for the hero's benefit once or twice, but that's more a traditional one-time stop the bad or bad guy deal. They're not seeking to redeem themselves in the eyes of those they don't respect. The story isn't about morality, it's about fun characters bouncing off each other and comical levels of property damage. Admittedly, that is a bit odd, considering that the original story was supposed to be an allegory for the multiple facets of the human mind. A lot of that stuff seems to be scrubbed down just for the spectacle. Hell, this show won't even fully acknowledge Buddha, who was a character in the books. The time you picked a fight with Buddha? 
I mean, admittedly, I can understand that. Perhaps a glorified toy commercial isn't really the best place to get into the nitty gritty of Buddhist philosophy. That time is better spent putting together some of those absolutely gorgeous fight scenes. If there's one thing that cartoons have historically floundered on, it's action scenes. Solely because they don't often have the budgets for it. Many fight scenes in cartoons I've seen are either stiff and clunky with no real feeling of motion, or they're slow and floaty and you don't quite feel the weight behind each attack. The budget for TV seldom allows for anything other than those two options. By contrast, LEGO has no shortage of money to pour into this property, and the animation studio Flying Bark has no qualms about delivering on the action. And holy hell do they deliver on the action. I mean, just look at some of this stuff. Fun fact, Flying Bark also animated Rise of the TMNT, one of the best looking cartoons of the modern day that also has some stellar fight scenes. They also did Glitch Tech and the new Marvel What If series. I may have to check those out too. I mean, I've fallen in love with everything else Flying Bark has been putting out. Why not check out the rest of it? In case it wasn't made abundantly clear at this point, I love this show and I want to make more people aware of it. Now, to be fair, there is a very good reason why most people aren't aware of this show. That being, it only just got a US release after a year of already being on the air. So going forward, I highly recommend you check it out and take in just how much fun it is. It's unique in that it doesn't strictly follow the trends that other popular cartoons have been following. It isn't a series made by a fresh face to the studio wanting to make their magnum opus on the first go. It's just a fun cartoon evocative of older cartoons that were intended to just entertain kids. Sure, the stakes get a little higher in the second season, but that doesn't fundamentally change what the show is about. It just sets the stage for MK becoming a hero in his own right. Classic hero's journey stuff. There might be some people in the animation fandom who might see such praise as a criticism, saying that I'm calling it vapid and mindless. And there are plenty of people already trying to make LEGO Monkey Kid into just another 2010s show in their fan works, focusing on the likes of angst and redemption. And I can't help but feel that they're missing the point of the show. Cause look, cartoons that delve into that kind of stuff can be good. Exploring the human condition can always be interesting. And there's nothing saying that kids don't deserve more shows like Infinity Train. It's just that they also deserve more shows like Lego Monkey Kid and, more importantly, they deserve the right to choose which one they prefer. So yeah, go watch Lego Monkey Kid. It just came out on Amazon recently. Or pirate it if you don't feel comfortable supporting Amazon. Whatever you do, get people talking about it. Word of mouth is the most potent form of advertisement there is, and it's going to guarantee the series gets more exposure. I really hope this show does well in the States because it fucking deserves it. And if you've already seen it, tell me your thoughts. Who's your favorite character and why? Do you think the darker tone they've taken in season two was too much? What are your hopes for season three? Let's get a discussion going. Thank <laughs> you.